The province is also in a dispute with its high school teachers. One of the big issues is a new mandatory e-learning program that takes effect next fall for those entering grade 9. The CBC's Deanna Sumanak-Johnson talked to one family who's tried it and gave it a failing grade. Living in the small town of Lyndhurst, Ontario, 18-year-old Zane Kalman was initially excited about the prospect of e-learning. Online courses gave him access to subjects not offered in his small high school, like writer's craft and computer coding. The reality was different. Uh, Workloads, I think, that were really unfair. And teachers that didn't really understand the course material, so they weren't much help when you tried to communicate with them. Zane's mom, Angela, worries what will happen to her three younger sons and other students come this fall when e-learning becomes compulsory for high school graduation. She says it will mean hours-long access to computers that students may not have. Libraries in this area are not within walking or biking distance for a lot of students and they're not open all the time. They're not even open every day, so they can't just go to the library. Um, Students can't just stay after school because a lot of these kids live nowhere near their school, and if they don't go home on the school bus, they don't have any way of getting home. The challenges of e-learning are not only restricted to rural areas. Toronto teacher Behan Farhadi has taught some e-learning classes and found the experience impersonal. It's different. It felt very administrative. I didn't remember any of the students that I had. She has also studied the effects of e-learning on students for her PhD. I would say for the average student who really benefits from having a teacher ask them a question about their learning, recognize and and ask and getting the data from their answer and then filling the gaps in their knowledge. Like that takes a specialist and I think we, learning online um, doesn't lend itself to that. While compulsory e-learning experiment has never been done in Canada before, five U.S. states have some e-learning requirements with varying results. Canadian-born Michael Barber, an expert on e-learning who works at Toro University in California, says it boils down to funding. The key is essentially how we design, deliver and support the instruction, regardless of the environment. And if the government is willing to put up the resources to ensure that all students have the same opportunity to have success. A spokesperson for Ontario Education Minister Stephen Lecce told CBC News, quote, We are proceeding with developing and implementing a Made in Ontario program that will ensure student flexibility, technological literacy and a vast selection of courses. What that means for Ontario families like the Kelmans is still unclear. For now, they're walking towards the future of learning that is full of promises and big unknowns. Deanna Sumanak-Johnson, CBC News, Lyndhurst, Ontario.